How's it going guys? We have a past level question for surgery slash internal medicine if you're studying for step one. High value question regardless because you're clearly going to have to ace your 2CK eventually. So before we get started, please subscribe to my channel. I really appreciate it. Give the video a like. I really appreciate it. Find me on Instagram at melman underscore medical, M-E-H-L-M-A-N underscore medical. Links down below. Find me on Telegram. Links to the Telegram group and channel are down below and I'll start the clip. So 69 year old woman, she has a blood pressure of 160 over 100. Up from 145 and 90 a year ago, crowded breweries heard an auscultation. Question wants to know what's most likely to confirm the diagnosis. Let's bear in mind our wording here, confirm the diagnosis, not the next best step of management. So we literally just have a one slash two liner. And let's just whip to the answer choices here. Choice A, adrenal venous sampling, wrong fucking answer. I don't believe I've ever seen this as either a correct or an incorrect distractor on NBME material. This more just exists in theory and resources, okay? We could theoretically do this to diagnose adrenal cortical hyperplasia, okay? So if we were to suspect, uh, for instance, primary hypercortisolism, Cushing syndrome, or primary hyperaldosteronism, uh, such as Kahn syndrome, dosteron screening tumor, we did a CT of the abdomen and saw nothing. The implication is that we have adrenal cortical hyperplasia, not a tumor, and we could do adrenal venous sampling to detect increased hormone concentration. In this case, wrong fucking answer. Choice B, biopsy adrenal gland, wrong answer. So uh, as I just fucking said, if we have a tumor uh, and we wanted to go forward with uh, diagnostic modalities, uh, a biopsy would serve the role of a confirmatory diagnosis. Okay, CT of the abdomen is wrong because this is what we would do as a next best step if we suspected we had a tumor, okay? so. Obviously, a lot we could discuss if we did EG dexamethasone suppression test and we had low ACTH, high cortisol, failure suppression with high dose dex, and we thought we had primary uh, cortisol secreting tumor, and we could do CT to abdomen with contrast. If we had a low renin, high aldosterone uh, in the setting of a patient with low potassium, high sodium, high pH, high bicarb, high CO2, and we thought we had primary uh, hyperaldosteronism, Kahn syndrome. We could do CT of the abdomen with contrast. In this case, wrong fucking answer. Choice D, MR angiography is the correct answer. So you need to know that uh, this is what the US simile wants for renal artery stenosis as well as fibromuscular dysplasia. This is renal artery stenosis due to atherosclerosis. And we say, well, how do we make that leap from this one liner? Okay, it's because we have carotid brewery. What do you think causes a carotid brewery? It's atherosclerosis. So if a patient has atherosclerosis in one location, is it so outrageous to presume that there's most likely atherosclerosis in other locations as well, such as the abdominal aorta, the coronaries, the popliteals, or the renal arteries? So this patient's had a gradually increasing blood pressure over a year. That's what US Simile will do sometimes. They'll say patients had gradually increasing blood pressure over a couple years, and they want you to know that that could be renal artery stenosis or fiber muscular dysplasia. So fiber muscular dysplasia is going to be younger women, 20s to 40s. It's not atherosclerosis. It's tunica media hyperplasia, string of uh, pearls or string of beads appearance when you do MR angiography. If you say renal artery stenosis, it, refer it refers to atherosclerosis. So in this patient, our next best step in management would be serum studies. We'd want to get our renin and aldosterone levels, wouldn't we? As well as our electrolytes, look for potassium, sodium, pH, bicarb. In this patient, what do you think the sodium, potassium, pH, and bicarb would be? Okay, well, I'm pausing so you can think about it. Well, if you have high aldosterone, you're going to be secreting potassium. Potassium's low. You're going to be reabsorbing sodium. Sodium's high. You're going to be kicking out protons. So our pH and our bicarb are high. We'll retain CO2 to compensate, so high CO2. Sodium in about half of questions can be in the normal range, by the way, okay? But I just mentioned the classic derangement. We do serum studies first, okay? And we'd see that renin and aldosterone are both high. And then the next best step in, and after that, which in turn is confirmatory, is magnetic resonance and geography. You know the deal to make more content. If you like my stuff, subscribe to my channel. And I appreciate your time. That's it.